Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome, glad you are here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility, use cases, and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right here at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, none of this is investment advice and I am not an investment advisor. Let's get into it. Flare proposal FIP01. Is this a game changer or a community splitter? If you've been in the Flare community, Community. You've known about this proposal for a while. If you are in the XRP community and you're finally getting back up to speed on how to get your airdrop and you've received it, and now you've heard about this proposal, uh, there are some in the XRP community feeling slighted by this proposal, and it's understandable. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff related to this thing, and then I'll let you know what I'm going to do. What are, oh, this is so cool. Last night I was driving. Not the time to be on Twitter, but I was driving and checking something on Twitter while I was stopped at a light and saw a community, uh, what is it called? Twitter space is happening. And I jumped into it and I was just blown away. Everyone, it was such a great uh, collection of big XRP community influencers and big Flare community influencers all talking about the proposal. A lot of intelligent conversation in there. And there was also a few people who were a little bit drunk and that was kind of what it was, what it was. But I literally had to pull over and so I could listen to this thing because it was that engaging and I didn't want to drop out. You know, I thought about should I share? And then I actually felt last night, no, I shouldn't share. We have so many people on here. I just want to listen, you know, and, and the people who were talking, we had blockchain backer on there, Crypto Eddie, uh, Bob Way, we had Neb from the Flare community and a bunch of viewers from this channel who I, I've seen comment on my YouTube channel. I've seen them on Twitter. Uh, they're following me. I'm following them. It was just it was like, wow, this is great. I wish we could do this every night or something. So Bob Way put that together. Please put together another one. Fantastic stuff. Anyway, let's get into this. So lots of there were some people on that on that Twitter spaces and there are people in the XRP community, which you probably know, who are not happy about FIP 01, because what it does is essentially if you want to receive if that passes and you want to receive your remaining 85 percent of your airdrop, you need to wrap your flare and delegate it. And you might end up with more than one one to one, which you were originally promised. Now, if it fails, you're guaranteed the one to one, but it's worse for the network. And so we're going to talk about both of those. And I'll let you know where you can vote on it when it's ready. It's coming up. Uh, should voting is going to be probably about a week from when this video drops. So I'll put a link in the video description of where you can vote. Today I was perusing Twitter and uh, saw a tweet by Hugo Fillion talking about this. He tweet basically, you know, put out a tweet about the benefits of FIP01. So we'll go over that first. And I quote, network ecosystem benefits of FIP01 incentivizes network participation and new ecosystem entrance shifts flare to those that participate from those that don't, reduces overall inflation, incentivizes infrastructure providers, safer, more decentralized network. And then what I like here, he talks about the benefits from the 2020 snapshot participants, you and me, if you're an airdrop recipient, uh, I am. It talks about the pros for us and the cons for us. Pro number one, benefits I should say, removes the risk of reliance on exchanges, which may fail. It's true, you know, you might, the, if you got your snapshot on an exchange and it failed, that exchange fails between now and the remaining 85%, you might not get it. And the second one here, depending on participation, you may end up with more flair than expected under the 2020 snapshot. So that's great news. And I think many still don't get that. So that's important to highlight here. And I'm glad Hugo is as well. And then FIP01 negatives for 2020 snapshot participants. <clears throat> and I quote, flair must be wrapped to receive the final distribution. And number two, depending on participation, you may end up with less than expected under the 2020 snapshot. However, this may be mitigated by a healthier ecosystem overall, right? So you could end up with more, you could end up with less. There are a lot of variables there that will determine that if it passes, but if it passes, you have to wrap and delegate. 
could end with more, could end up with less. And then I cue, and then I quote Hugo, I believe FIP01 is a major improvement on the existing plan. It is beneficial for the network, the ecosystem, and those that participate. It removes the risk of relying on exchanges. It has some potential negative effects for the 2020 snapshot shot recipients detailed above. And there you go. It is early days for Flare. I hope the voters put the long-term interests of the network and the evolution of the ecosystem first. Pretty cool stuff. I, I put out a Twitter thread. I'll go over that in a bit. I'll put the link to the Flare Network proposal in the description of this channel as well, because I think one of the main issues I've seen out there is a lot of people who are in the XRP community, not a lot, but some of the people in the XRP community who are feeling slighted may have not have read this thing, this proposal actually, and I understand it takes a little time, but this one's pretty, it's a pretty quick read. Yeah, you could end up with more. You literally could end up with more. Now, I understand you might be incentivized to sell for a number of reasons, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you want to benefit the ecosystem and maybe end up with more as a result, a yes probably could be a good vote for you. So let's get on to what I'm doing here. I will talk about this thread I put out. So here we go. Here's what I did coming from the perspective of an of someone who received the airdrop. <clears throat> so I went through, you know, the stuff I had to do to, to make this airdrop happen. And I quote, I reorganized my XRP holdings to qualify for the airdrop. Here are my thoughts on FIP01 and its impact on both the XRP community and the Flare community. Number one, in the last two years, Flare Networks has evolved into a powerhouse project that is tackling bigger issues than just DeFi capabilities for XRP. And it's true. Originally, when this proposal came out, the XRP community was excited because it was a solution for DeFi for XRP that could be trusted. You didn't have to use, you know, WXRP, which I don't even know if that was out around that time, but no one was, it doesn't really have much going on there. There's not much liquidity going on there. So everyone was excited about this. DeFi for XRP, yay. And that's what Flare Networks was originally intended to be. You go a little bit forward, and the truth is that skilled members of the XRP community have been actively working towards bringing DeFi solutions to XRP, and you can see that in proposal XLS30D. Uh, so that's basically bringing DeFi to the XRP ledger. And then I quoted, or I wrote, I'm hopeful that it will be successful, and I would be happy to deploy capital there. And that's 100% true. I mean, so... XRP community is already saying, well, that's great for our community, but we're going to just do it on our own anyways. And that's great. I think that's fantastic. I would happily deploy some of my XRP to an automated market maker on the XRP ledger. No problem. No question in and of itself. Likewise, Flare has also grown into something that is huge. And it's not just solving a problem for DeFi for XRP, which we'll talk about in a bit. So in the next tweet of the thread, I wrote, I understand why certain members of the XRP community may feel slighted by the proposal. However, if you take time to read the proposal, you will see that you could potentially end up with more tokens if it is passed compared to if it is not. But, and I quote, FIP01 presents numerous advantages for Flare Network's success, with one standing out to me in particular. And yeah, when I read the proposal, this this stuck out to me, this bullet point in the proposal did, because I'm, I'm a developer. I've been a developer for like 20 years, in addition to being an investor, and I love building things. And Flare is one of the networks I want to build something on. I'd love to build something for the XRP ledger too. So I'm not, I'm not uh, so tribalistic. I, I try not to be. I mean, it's human nature, but I, I, I practice not practicing tribalism, if you will. I wouldn't mind building something for both, maybe something that's interoperable using Flare. Anyways, this one stuck out to me. If FIP01 fails, and I quote, developers who may wish to use the technology and hence contribute to the growth of the ecosystem may be fearful that their investment of time and money into the ecosystem will not be repaid. Basically, that's huge. As a developer, and I'm an entrepreneur developer, um, I've been an employee for a long time in the past and I switch more to entrepreneurial stuff. And I will say this as a developer investor, like if you become a technical co-founder, it's way easier to invest money than invest time because time you can't get back. And when you're writing code and building applications that need to scale at enterprise level, need QA, need proper infrastructure, 
you're you're devo- you're devoting time to that, and if you're afraid that that might fail, I mean, there's no guarantees, of course. That's what entrepreneurship and startups are all about. But you want to take a calculated risk, and if you're thinking, well, I mean, everyone's just going to dump this coin anyways. It's only for the XRP community, and they already have their own DeFi solution coming a- as anyway. I might not build something on Flare, and so I would I wouldn't want to think that. I'd want to think, oh, Flare stands on its own. It's its own ecosystem that solves problems that XRP does not. The XRP ledger does not particularly solve very well. The XRP ledger solves many amazing problems. It has tons of use cases, but reading the states of other ledgers and being able to bridge in an insured manner that mitigates all the risks and bridging that are out there, that is not one of, of XRP's use cases. That's one of Flare's use cases, and it's one of the biggest problems in DeFi. The, so the network is standing on its own with solving its own problems, and it needs to have many communities, and I get into that later. And then finally, my last two tweets sum it all up. The biggest things for me And I quote, for Flare to achieve success as the Connect Everything solution, it requires numerous developers and startups from many communities who are willing to take a chance on its technology to provide solutions for businesses, consumers, and investors, right? Many people, not just people in the XRP community, people from all over the place. It could be from, you know, XLM community, from... The Algorand community, from the Bitcoin community, just I, there's too many to name, right? And so that's why I ended it with, I am leaning towards a yes. It helps the chances of Flare succeeding, which can, may or may help the price of our tokens in the future, in the long run, right? Ultimately, I'm holding, I'm delegating, I'm speculating that the value of Flare tokens will go up in the future. That is purely my speculation, not financial advice. You'd have to do your own research on that one. But that is what I believe will happen. And I believe FIP01 will help that because it will bring in, it will incentivize people from many different communities to come in and participate, participate and to wrap and to delegate. So that's it. I'm leaning towards a yes, as you can see here at the end of my thread. So what are you going to do? Are you, do you feel slighted by this? I can see why, like I said, some of the XRP community does feel slighted. Like if I put on my hat, I, it's easy. I, I can get into that mindset, right? I remember back in the day, summer 2020, leaning into December 2020, I was like, oh man, how I have to learn. I have to wrap my head around how to learn this. So I have to put a little time into this to figure out how to do this. And then I came up with my own strategy. I'm like, well, I don't want to, I keep my XRP over here. It's not on a ledger. I don't, I mean, I'm not a Ledger Nano fan. What can I say? I wish they open sourced their operating system is all. They're not bad, and I use them for some things. But I don't keep my my, uh, cold storage there. I keep it on another one. I keep it on a Trezor. But to qualify for this airdrop, I shuffled that around. I moved it from my Trezor to my Ledger, and then I qualified, and then I had to move it back. And who knows? That was, you know, and I'm moving around a lot of XRP. It's like, I don't want to have all these flags. What's all this XRP moving for? Not that I'm some whale, but still. And, you know, it's kind of it just takes work to do. So I'm coming from the perspective of someone who had to do all that. And yeah, I could say, well, I wanted the, I want the original proposal, what I was guaranteed. I want, uh, you know, this is what I was told I would get. I want to get that. And I could see why people would think that. However, having spent more time researching Flare, putting out Flare content in addition to other um, blockchains that have utility use cases and solve business problems. Um, I've learned quite a bit about Flare and they're doing something really spectacular that others aren't doing. And I believe that they have a good shot if they get enough startup involvement, developer involvement to start building on this thing and solving problems, solving problems using blockchain, a single source of truth. And in this case, a network that can connect the blockchains in a way that's different than others, you know, in a way that's different than Cosmos or, I, you know, some of the others I cover here, XTC, lots of others. And I'll talk more about those chains as well because it's fun. But anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm starting to ramble on. The caffeine is getting, kicking in some ADD. Uh, I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.